Hey everybody, welcome to my craft room. Today I am gonna walk you through this very functional, very organized craft room. I'm gonna show you how I organize all of my craft supplies and how I keep it that way and lots of tips so you can do it too. If that sounds like something you wanna see, stick around, it's coming right up. there, I'm Sarah. This is Creative Ramblings, where I share simple, inspiring projects with new videos every week. Everything from simple crafts to seasonal home decor, you can find those types of projects right here. If that sounds like something you like, consider subscribing so you don't miss my next video. So today, instead of sharing a project with you, I am going to share with you the room where I create all of my projects. I know a lot of you are crafters and makers and DIYers, so I wanted to take you behind the scenes and show you how I functionally organize and use all of my craft supplies. A beautifully organized room is one thing, but keeping it that way and having things organized in a way that we can use them, we can see them, we can be inspired by them, that's a whole nother thing. So I have been working to find a way to organize my craft supplies for years, and I think I finally figured it out. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit and go through this craft room space by space, and I'm gonna show you what works for me and hopefully some tips that are gonna work for you too. So let me tell you about this space. Right behind the camera here is the front door to my home. And this room has an opening right here, and there's an opening off to my right here that leads to the kitchen. So this is a very visible room in my home. It's technically the formal dining room, but we've never used it as a dining room. It has always been a fun craft or workspace. So it is very visible to anybody who walks in the front door. So I want it to be organized, but I also want it to be fun and have a lot of personality because everybody sees it. So what I did a couple months ago was just empty this room completely. I gave it a new coat of light blue paint on the walls and added some nice bright daylight LED bulbs to just brighten up the whole space. Then I went to Ikea and purchased uh, the white furniture that you see in the back and some of the white cabinets on these walls that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. I went for very functional, basic white furniture because I knew I was gonna be able to bring in color and fun in other ways. The keys that I needed for this craft room were a large workspace, so I wanted a whole wall of desks where I could have both my computer, my Cricut, uh, my other items that I use all the time. I needed a large workspace. Then I needed drawers and cabinets, and I also needed a large table right here. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about this table um, further along in the video. So for now, we're gonna zoom out and I'm gonna go, or zoom in, and I'm gonna go show you what I've all got back there. Now, anything I mention here that's really specific, like the IKEA furniture, I've got that all listed down below so you can get more details. All right, so let's start with this furniture back here. These are two sets of Alex drawers from IKEA, and these are three separate Linman tabletops that go on top of them. On the very ends, there are legs holding them up. But this is essentially three tabletops with some bases underneath. It gives me one long space to work and different. I was able to create different areas using this setup here. So let's start over in my office area over here. So this corner over here houses my computer and the things I use uh, to run a business. So I have pegboard in this, off, in this craft room in this office one is over here, the other one's on the other side we can take a peek at, but I am a very visual person. I know if everything is hidden away, I might forget about it, I might not find it, I might not use it. So there's some items that I just like to have up um, and visual for me. So I've got all of my favorite pens, my favorite Sharpies, um, and instead of just having them in regular old containers, I really try to put them in things that I enjoy looking at. Uh, you can find a water marble that water marbling video uh, up above if you want to know how to marble and create jars just like this. I've also got some office supplies up on top there. Paper clips, binder clips, pins, rulers, staplers, all kinds of other things that I use often. I try to keep most of my desktop clear, but I do have a little three drawer organizer there with some other office supplies in it. 
a few tips that I want to share. This is a basket I use all the time. This is just a basket with scrap paper in it. So when my kids come home with paper, I read it, I do what I need to do with it, then I cut it in half, and as long as it has a clean back, I store it in here and we use it for scrap paper. The other thing I have on this side, mostly because my Cricut is right here, is I have all of my Cricut mats hung on pegboard in the back here. And this is really nice. They are able to stay nice and flat. They're not scrunched anywhere. And I can access them whenever I want to use my Cricut. Then in these Alex drawers down here, I have a lot of different office supplies and paper and that type of thing. And then the bottom drawer, let me zoom in on that and show you what's in there. So as a crafter, one of the things I use so often is glue and different types of adhesives. So I like to keep like items together. So this bottom drawer is my glue drawer. I've got a little organizer in here, which was actually left over from a set of magnet dolls that my kids had. So I didn't really need to go out and buy anything new for this drawer. I just used something I had and everything is in here by type. I've got super glue, glue dots, tape runners, these little green topped containers I've used in our playroom, uh, they come from Ikea. They hold all of my glue sticks. So I've got clear glue sticks and the colorful glue sticks here. But keeping like items together means I can get any type of adhesive I need right at my fingertips here. Uh, I do have more glue than this. I'm gonna show you where some of the larger containers are a little bit later on in this video. Now we're gonna talk about what's under here. So this area right here, remember I said that my front door is right over there and people can see in here? I chose to add some curtains to this place right here and kind of conceal what's behind them. So I'm gonna lift up the curtains and show you what's in there. They just pull up like this and I've got uh, my printer hidden down here. So the printer is something I use often but I didn't want it taking up desk space. I've got some extra paper and then I've got some drawers here just to um, store some extra items. I keep, uh, I keep different chargers. I've got an extra hard drive in here. Um, I keep a lot of blanks down here. So um, different pouches, uh, apparel items, bags, different things. Uh, again, blanks. We craft a lot, we use a lot of blanks. And then down here, think of this as a way to store items that you have a lot of. So I have a lot of wood items. So everything from tiny craft sticks to wood rounds to large, again, wood blanks. I have a lot of these and this just seemed like a perfect place to store them. Again, I use these a lot. I needed them at my fingertips, but they didn't need to be out in the open. So they're under here. Now these curtains. These are just thin cotton fabric with a hem sewn around each one. They are on just little hooks here that are screwed into the desktop. And then I just, after I hemmed up the fabric all the way around here, I just cut a little hole and then it hangs right on the hook. So I can easily remove this if I need to and I can pull it down but then it has a nice finished look so that people aren't looking at this when they come in my front door. Now coming along to this side of the office, this is where I do a lot of my crafting. So let's take a moment to look at the paint first. All of this paint is in rainbow order and I keep it this way because it inspires me to create when I'm able to see all of my paint. This is just a piece of wood with Ikea shelf brackets here, uh, drilled into some studs, and I keep all of my paint right there. Now another pegboard up here. This is where I keep a lot of my essential craft supplies. So as crafters, there's things that we use all the time. The things that we are grabbing for on a daily basis, no matter what project we're working on. So scissors, definitely scissors. Um, I've got some hole punches up there and I've got some different tools that I use for my Cricut and just other crafty things. This is a brad tool here, some different picks, that type of thing. So I keep all of those up there. Now, when you put a pegboard in your craft room, you can get a large pack of accessories. And what I mean by accessories 
a large pack of hooks like this where you get a couple different hooks of each type and you can use them to organize your pegboard. So I have a link to um, a, a pack of these that I have that I've used to store my items. So this is my fabric ruler here. And then I keep my uh, self-healing sewing mat up here as well. This is the absolute best way to store rolls of vinyl. Hands down the best way. This is a bag holder from Ikea. It is $2. And I have it hung up here just on some pegboard hooks. You can hang this directory on a wall. You don't need it on pegboard. You can hang it on a wall. It actually comes with adhesive on the back. You can stick it to a wall. But I love this, you guys, because it just holds all of your vinyl rolls right in these little holes here. Phenomenal. And you can hold a whole set here, and then it's got a set behind it as well. So lots of vinyl rolls. Other things I keep out on the desk, again, I said I keep my Cricut out, I keep my Easy Press out, and I keep my paper out. So this is a storage rack from Michaels that stores 12 by 12 paper. Uh, I don't have as much paper as I used to. I have shared in the past really great ways to store some paper, and I'll link those down below. But as I move to different types of craft projects, vinyl, that type of thing, I don't have as much paper. So one of these uh, 12 by 12 storage boxes works for me. I keep my pattern paper, solid paper, um, patterned or themed paper packs, and then solid paper packs. So I'm able to find what I need. These up here are magazine files, just cardboard magazine files. I use these all over this room, I'll show you and um, I store my eight and a half by 11 paper in them. And I have it sorted by color all throughout here. So there's all the pretty colors. So all the paper is stored in these. And then to make it look nice, cause these, you know, aren't great looking on the outside. This is a square of 12 by 12 uh, cardstock that I just cut into three pieces and then put on here so that it would match the theme of the room. So there's really easy ways to decorate and update inexpensive organizing supplies. All right, so let's go down below and I'll show you what's in these drawers. All right, so we've got another set of Alex drawers here and I keep my vinyl scraps in these. So in the top one here is all kinds of adhesive vinyl scraps. Save your scraps. I mean, you can make all kinds of projects from a little piece like this. I also have big bulk rolls of vinyl that don't fit um, up here yet on this Ikea bag holder. So my bulk rolls, my extra transfer tape, that's all in here along with little scraps. There are ways to organize scraps a little bit better than this, but for me it's just enough to have a place to throw them and I can dig through here if I need a specific color. The next drawer is the same thing, but it's scraps of iron-on. So all kinds of different iron-on in here. I've got some infusible ink in here, and again, uh, some rolls that aren't open yet. When you have Cricut vinyl and it's not open yet, it's still got the cardboard tube in it, and it doesn't fit in this bag holder. So I keep all those down there, infusible ink, and some blanks in here as well. So a place where I can access everything and when I'm done with a project, I literally just put the scraps in and then they're there for next time. Uh, and then down here, I've got some different tools. So I keep uh, my, my cutting trays there, my, my larger cutters down here, and then uh, like my wood burning tool, that type of thing. So again, going on the theme that everything should be loop, lumped together with like items. So vinyl with vinyl, cutters with cutters, things together so that you know where to find them. Now over here, this is an Ikea Rast dresser. This is an older dresser that I made over and it fit perfectly underneath here. Uh, I could have done more Alex drawers, but honestly, if, you're, if we're looking to save money and we're just looking to be organized, I didn't need to get a new piece of furniture for under here. So what I have in here are um, more bins with items stored in them. So I actually still have a silhouette that I use, and so I keep my silhouette items in these bins so that if I choose to use that machine, I've got all the pieces right here. And down in the bottom, 
I used to do a lot of stamping and I don't do so much anymore, but I still keep all the items. So I keep my stamps in a container like this so that I can open it and it is all divided. And I've got all of my stamps, you know, that I can still access right here. So I've got two of these. I have pared down my stamps over the years, but I've got two of these and then my embossing powders, my inks are down here, my heat gun, again, everything together in one area so I know where it is when I wanna use it. So from this craft corner here, we are going to pan over past the office to the side wall here, and I am going to talk to you about these cabinets. These cabinets are on the outside wall, and I've got two beautiful windows there. You'll notice that the window on the right does not yet have curtains, and that is a work in progress over there. I will talk about that in a little bit. But let's focus on these cabinets and let me show you what I like to keep behind doors. So this is another set of Ikea cabinets. They are stacked on top of each other with metal legs on the bottom. So in here are supplies that I use, but I don't necessarily need to have right out in front of me. So when you are organizing your craft room, think about those essential items that you want to have right out in front of you. Your scissors, your glue, your Cricut, whatever it is that inspires you that you need at your fingertips. The rest, let's put away behind the doors. So these doors pop open. I've used these same cabinets in my kids' playroom. They are really easy to open. And in here, I use the same ideas that I do on the pegboards. So everything is order is organized by type. I use a lot of jars to organize things that I use. So pom-poms, buttons, clothespins, beads, all kinds of other unique items. And again, it doesn't have to be fancy. Use what you have. I keep all of my jars, so that's why I have all of these jars. But I've got little plastic containers too. They don't all match, and that's okay. Uh, up here, I've got glitter. And I'm sure I could make, oops, I'm sure I could make my glitter look cuter, but I just keep it in its original containers, corral it all in a basket, and keep it in here. This is a nice little wood box I got as a gift, and um, I use it to keep some sewing thread, notions, that type of thing. Uh, my sewing machine is hidden. I am going to show you where I keep that in a moment. So then down here, I keep um, more embellishments. Let me pull this out and show you what I keep these in. This is such a great container. It all stacks together, but they are individual little containers that you can keep everything in. This one has confetti. I have some different cut pieces in here. There are brads, all kind of different things in here, but again, everything's together. Then I have an old school die cutting machine. These things like never break. This is my big shot. I have had it forever. It works fantastic. I have pared down my dies a little bit for this one. So I just keep them in a small container, all of the metal dies, and I keep them together. I like using my Big Shot for embossing, when I'm embossing paper or doing paper crafts. And in here, this is like a portfolio that has um, plastic sleeves in it. And I do have some stamp sets in these plastic sleeves here, but what I love this for is storing embossing folders. So each one has a couple of different folders and I can just pull them out when I need them. But I like that when I lay this flat on a table, I can see all of my different embossing folders right in these plastic sleeves and it stores up pretty thin and I can just put it in back here. So again, things I use, things I don't use that often, um, but I still wanna have organized. So we'll close that back up and down below is um, more of the same. In the bottom cabinets, I have containers like this that store things like punches, so handheld punches in there. And then I showed you all my paint in rainbow order. Down here we've got paint markers, fabric markers, that type of thing. There are extra paint brushes along here. And remember, I said it doesn't matter what your containers look like. This is a cookie canister and it stores some foam brushes and extra pieces that I wanna have on hand. 
And then down below I also mentioned I have more glue. There is my big jug of glue. My favorite spray glue that I use for everything. I have shaving cream, saline, all those things you need for slime um, down here as well. And then these containers are great. You can get a whole set of these Rubbermaid containers uh, at, at Walmart. They're in the kitchen area. And you can just store lots of little notions in them. This is shells. I've got one with rocks and rice, different types of things in there that I use for decor. And then up here, um, these are different beauty products. So beeswax, shea butter, oils, things to make lotion bars and that type of thing. Now let's move over to the next part. So moving from the cabinets over a little bit here, we've got a little bit more storage down there. All right, so down here in this corner, we have these square cabinets from Ikea. I have three of them clipped together and some silver legs holding them up here. And this is a bench. I am in the process of making a bench cushion for this, uh, which is why the curtains are down from this window because I took them down to really kind of see how this would all fit in this space. Uh, but once the cushion goes on, the curtains will go back up and I'll have two matching windows again. Uh, but this is another piece of storage. So instead of just a decorative bench, it functions as storage too. So I have some files here, uh, tax files, business files, that type of thing. And then more of these magazine files that I showed you with my paper. So again, just this cardboard magazine file. This one happens to store uh, blank cards. The other one uh, has envelopes. These here all have scraps of paper. So not only do I save my vinyl and iron-on scraps, I save a good sized pieces of cardstock as well. And again, on here I have that um, nice patterned uh, paper, the cardstock, that I cut and put over the back of the magazine file so that it looks nice. So again, functional storage. I love functional storage, you guys. Have that be your goal when you are organizing. Functional storage. Um, I want it, I, I have an extra seating space here, being able to sit on it, but it's serving me a really good purpose. So moving on from this area, that is my front door to my home. So again, it's a really visible area. And then over here, I have a cork board. There's a big white board over here. And another set of those Ikea cabinets with one of the squares on top with a lot more of the same inside. This one also serves as a shelf too to keep my laminator and a speaker on. And just to round out the room here, that's the door to my kitchen. And then we come back around to this fabulous art wall here, which I'll zoom out and show you. And then we're back to the desk where we started. The art on this wall is prints from Canva and they are just brightly colored and a lot of fun really add some color and some interest to this room. So I've taken you around the outside of the room and in this room, right in the middle, is a giant granite table. I have had this table for a very long time. Uh, granite holds up so well. I used to work at a furniture store and I got a phenomenal deal on this table. So when we moved and it no longer fit in our kitchen, it became my craft table. It has paint on it, it is chipped and dinged. Uh, but it's got this beautiful speckled top to it, so you can't see all of that. So I love having this, and it's got a nice uh, solid wood bottom on it, so this thing is really sturdy. It is the perfect open craft workspace. And I think every craft room needs a space to work. So I can store all my stuff behind me and in all these cabinets that I showed you, but um, I need a space to do my projects. Now you'll notice that on the front of this table is a curtain, just like the one behind me here covering up the printer. So I'm going to take you down underneath this table and show you what I store behind that curtain. All right, so we're over on the other side of the table here. I've just got a little stool. We'll get that out of the way. Um, but down here, I told you I hid my sewing machine. It is in a case and it is stored right there. This crate right here, um, when I used to do more uh, paper crafting, I stored all of my paper in this crate in hanging file folders. I'm gonna link that post down below because it's a really valuable uh, way to store eight and a half by 11 paper if you have a lot of it. But now this crate is just filled with that stuff that's too big to go anywhere else. My giant roll of freezer paper, uh, other decorative papers, contact paper, uh, some extra embroidery hoops, big items that I use but don't need to be out. Added bonus that this pretty side can go over here 
and kind of face out. And then on the other side over here, the big bin on the bottom is Girl Scout stuff. I'm a Girl Scout leader, so I've got a lot of uh, crafty things that we do for Scouts that are in that box there. And then there's this right here. This is just a big decorative basket, but I keep all like the old newspapers in it. I don't get a daily paper, but these are the ones that come in the mail. And I save all of this because really when we craft, we need to cover up our workspace. So that's what's in there. Now I did tell you this is a functional workspace. And so I've showed you this very clean, this very organized room. Uh, but I do have like three projects that are ongoing right now. And I used to have the problem where I would just leave them out on my table because I couldn't finish them in one day. And what happens to all of us crafters are that those projects build up and they build up and then we just have this mess, or at least I did. So um, I still have my projects out, but now I keep them contained. So this is a little container from uh, Dollar Tree, but really I, I use all kinds of different containers for this. And I keep them down under the table or sometimes I just keep them out right on top of the table. But this is a project I'm working on, uh, hopefully that I'll finish tomorrow, but involved some painting of jars. And I just have all the supplies in here. So I did step one this morning and then I tucked it all away in my bin. I can store it down um, underneath the table. And then later on tonight, I'm gonna come back and finish that up. So don't feel like you have to either finish a project in an hour or you know leave it all out on your table. Just corral it a little bit, put it in a bin, put it in a box, and then go back to that box when you wanna finish it. So that is my craft room tour. I hope that taking a tour of this room has inspired you and hopefully given you some ideas that you can use in your craft room and your craft space. Take some of this and uh, get even more organized. If you have any questions about what I shared here today, please leave a comment down below. And if you want to see more organizing videos, I have a full video of my kids' playroom using a lot of the same IKEA furniture that's in here, uh, but how we repurposed it or purposed it for a kid's space. So be sure to check out that video. If you like what you saw here today and you like craft projects that you can make in a room like this, I share new videos right here on Creative Ramblings every Thursday. So I hope you'll consider subscribing so you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.